I've got the set all back together and a few problems have cropped up, which isn't surprising when you do this much work on a set really. So first off, the replica yoke cover is working fine except for one issue. That uh, rubber thing with the uh, spring around it that's supposed to push up against it and hold the yoke firm to the CRT front, it's not uh, really fitting in too well. The rubber is beveled and it's supposed to slide inside between the glass and the plastic. Well, the original was rounded over, whereas mine, it's a, a right angle. The other issue is that when I put the new conductive coating on the outside of the CRT, I went too close down to where the yoke goes and it was arcing. I just slipped some electrical tape in between for now. And I also discovered there's a bit of a loose winding, a stray wire, it's broken loose from the main body. So I'm gonna take that whole thing apart to address all these issues. I'll uh, remove some of that conductive coating and I will secure that loose wire probably with uh, some Corona dope. And I'm gonna take a spoon, heat it up, and use the curved back of it to kinda chamfer over that plastic. It's fairly soft. In fact, I melted those tabs a bit to hold it securely to the yoke. All right, so that's uh, all well and good, but the much, much, much bigger issue is I basically have lost my picture very, very faint. And there's a slowly moving black bar, and the brightness control does nothing. Which makes me think I got a bad connection somewhere. Hopefully it's just a bad connection somewhere between that brightness control and the CRT base. That brightness control actually doesn't go directly to the CRT, it goes to the circuit board. Which I find a little odd. I don't Normally that would just go like right to a G1 or the cathode to provide a bias. So let's see. Uh, there's brightness. Oh, okay. They actually mix in that DC bias with the video signal and apply both to the cathode. And it looks like, for, oh, for G1, that's vertical blanking. To develop a little pulse here in this network and that goes to the control grid. Alright, so uh, I can see that there is video coming through, so that cathode connection's got to be okay, because we're getting video, but that resistor could be open. Could have a bad connection to this pot. The pot may have developed a problem. I don't know, but hopefully that won't be too big of a challenge to figure out. I got the CRT out, and you can see where the yoke bit into the conductive coating here. So I was pretty close. If I just maybe only coated it to here, wouldn't have been an issue, so I'll just, I suppose, scrape this off, or maybe try a little acetone on a Q-tip, and on the uh, flip side, on the yoke, put a little Corona dope, where it got burned up in here. Uh, it doesn't seem to have uh, caused any damage, I don't see a broken wire or anything like that. Plus, I could still see with that faint image on the screen, it, it had a complete raster, so I don't think that's a problem. As far as this goes. I actually did not end up using a heat to, to melt that. I realized when I put down this ring to hold the um, centering rings in place uh, that this was actually a little bit too small on the interior diameter and there was an overhang. So I just used some 220 grit sandpaper and worked all around in there and it's now completely flush all the way around. Nice and smooth and this seems to fit in there a whole lot better so I think I'll take care of that. So uh, I guess what I'm going to do is uh, scrape this or you know, get this back, put it all back together, and then resume troubleshooting if there's still any problem. Well, I hate to say it, but there is one other obvious possibility that could be causing this problem, which is that the cathode has reopened. 
So all the voltages check out okay, and that brightness control, which is on the cathode, does nothing. So this might just be producing an image just from the voltages on the other elements, just ripping a few electrons free to produce a dim image. So the easy way to find that out is to simply get out my CRT tester and make sure this is still healthy. And, worst case, if the cathode has opened up again, well, I will try zapping it again. Well, what do you know? Here we are again. No emissions. Well, I knew it was, this is always a possibility that a cathode uh, could break loose again, so I'll try to re-weld it again. Uh, what very may well have done it is when I snapped on this ion trap magnet ring. I tried to do it very gently, but that may have uh, jarred things enough to break it loose. So I tried doing it again while it's in the set, but I fear I may have to take this whole thing apart yet again. I used the same cathode welding trick and once again it did the trick. Great cutoff and great emissions. This time around I did it with the uh, CRT installed and I just took the butt of the screwdriver and just wham straight down on the neck. Gently tapping. Have not lost emissions. Alright, so I'll just be careful and let the jar this set in the future and uh, let's get this reconnected and I suspect that I will have a nice bright picture once again. Alright, back in business. Brightness control working. So what was the uh, big deal about getting those centering magnets, those rings on there, those little ears? Well, now by manipulating them, which is a little tricky to do, you don't want to get burned on a tube or shocked by anything, uh, you can center the picture. So I will endeavor to do that right now. You can see that it uh, is off to the left a little bit too much. Alright, so if I go clockwise with one of them, it moves it down and to the right. Sending it about all the way over to the right side now, but now it's a little bit too low, so now I gotta manipulate the other one. Let's see what effect that has. Alright, that brings it to the right and up. So I'm going to go up a little bit more. Also got to get a test pattern on there. And uh, make sure I got the height and linearity adjusted. I should have done that before I even tried centering it, but I wanted to make sure the centering rings were doing the trick. So they're very slightly magnetized. That's the way they work. And uh, that will deflect the electrons a little bit. Alright, so for test pattern, I might as well haul out the uh, Suncor VG91 I picked up recently. Alright, got everything squared away. Now, I think all that's left is to pop this back into the cabinet. I broke a date with Danny this afternoon. I think he felt hurt. And here it is all back together for one final look. So that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this look at restoring yet another Admiral TV. This time it was a portable TS-105AL AL for the aluminum cabinets.
outside.